for cycles and then they don't have one for six to nine months and um the moms they heavy heavy yeah or they're super heavy they're laid out on the ground feeling like they're going to pass out with their cycles mm -hmm. Um, major acne and, and stuff like that, but but to the extreme of where we're seeing it get worse and worse. Mm -hmm. I feel like since I just started working here, and I'm sure being an OB gen for the last how long has it been? <laughs> Way too long. Um, but but for a long time to the point where the typical story is I was just put on birth control pills. Yeah. And and it's probably been going on longer than we think because we're also now seeing those people that are 25 or 30 struggling with infertility right. and if you go through their story they're saying oh my periods were miserable and then, then I they were regular correct or they were so heavy that I got put on the birth control pill so yeah and, and our whole point here that I think I want women to really understand um, your cycle is not something that needs to just be controlled because <clears throat> in and of itself it's is the problem what I'm trying to say is that a, a regular cycle is a sign of good health, and we want to restore that sign, not mask it so that you have a regular cycle, but it's brought on by birth control pills. Correct. The whole point of, of knowing that you have a regular monthly cycle is that everything in the system is going well. And so if you just mask that with birth control pills, when it comes time for you to get pregnant, you have no idea, is everything in the system going well? So that's what the whole point of this is. is we want to figure out why did everything go, why are you not having a cycle? Why is it so terrible in the first place? That's the root cause of functional medicine. Correct. And what we want to do today is address if you have a teenager and she is complaining of heavy periods or her cycles are irregular, a little understanding of where it comes from and then most importantly, what you can do naturally to regulate that. Again, that doesn't mean that if you're daughter's going off to college and you're worried about her getting pregnant that we're totally anti-birth control pills. I mean, that's a whole other talk. What we want to go back to is if your periods are irregular and you go on the pill, they will regulate out. I tell people my 90-year-old grandmother will have regular periods on the pill. Here's another Does thing. what that? Is that a good idea? No. <laughs> Here's another thing. If you have breakthrough bleeding or irregular periods while you're on the pill, that is a pill problem. That is not, and I see that also. I've been on the pill for three or four years and now I'm having spotting. That's not what we're talking about. That is a birth control pill issue. What we're talking about today is the sort of teenagers, the average age of, of starting menses used to be a little bit older. It was 12 or 13. It's moving earlier now we talk about that. But the teenager that, that has the problems we talked about, what's the best thing that they can do to keep them healthy? Or in the background today, just understanding where the cycle's coming from and what can disrupt it. So my two minutes of science is basically going to be, I want everybody to understand that where, where our health in this situation is a triangle. There's three things that will create our normalness, if you will, as a female. Our genetics, our gut, and I call it dysbiosis, your gut bacteria in balance will keep you healthy, digest, nutrients, no problems. Dysbiosis is the word for when your bacteria in your large intestine are dysfunctional. They're not doing their job. That creates an inflammatory process and other problems that we've talked about on other videos. Last is the environment around you. Those three are pretty significant. An environment goes through a long list. It's everything from, some people say mercury fillings. Some people will tell you um, a lot of the products. There are the, a lot of the products that, that are okayed in the United States have the, the makeup products and shampoo and sunscreen have a lot of chemicals in them that somebody has passed as okay, it's not gonna kill us, but day in, day out, that is creating a state of inflammation or low-level toxicity in your system that will create a disbalance in how your cells function and, and, and how they talk to each other and basically where your cycle is going to come from. So ovaries generally are asleep. They wake up and develop in your early teen years. They start talking to the central nervous system and that's where the estrogen disbalance comes from everybody gets it. The question is, how is it controlled, right, within our system so that the central nervous system and the ovaries can talk, the estrogen gets used, 
no baby comes and the estrogen gets offloaded and that is going to give you that normal cycle your genetics actually in us as women we are 99.9% .9 almost the same and I was we were talking about it before if you look and you look every baby kind of in that window looks the same when you've had a baby your gut microbiome or your gut bugs are what vary you they determine how your genes interact and how they express and that's why we always look all look and function a little bit different however some women or I guess men too carry certain genes that will make them more susceptible to gut dysfunction or to immune dysfunction so depending on what your genes are pair that with the shampoo or the food you're eating the gluten in the in the the food that you're eating or the sugars or the casein and how you digest combine that with what's going on with your gut bugs and that can give you a poor I guess GI system mm -hmm. that would prevent efficient estrogen offload because your hormones remember after they're done being used in your body they go through your liver and then they're offloaded through your gut and through your urine so Sheila's going to talk a little bit now about if you are somebody, I guess as a woman that has it, or especially you're worried about your daughter, what are things that you need to consider on a day-to-day -day basis, A, while she's home, and B, when she goes off to college especially? What are things that are handled? Well, and, and before I do that, I just wanted to kind of clear up some things because I know we're going to get this question. People get very confused about, and we've talked about this several times, if there is an issue with either not having a period at all, is that because there's not enough estrogen or is there not enough progesterone? Or what is the hormonal issue that would cause you not to have cycles at all? Or they just stop. So the long, short answer to that is yes. <laughs> okay, it could yes. be either. It could be high estrogen, low estrogen. Generally, the progesterone will be low. Yeah. Because if you ovulate, you'll have progesterone. But you can have high estrogen or low estrogen and your cycles will stop. The older, I'd use disease state. The older issues, years ago when this would happen, it usually was a high estrogen or an estrogen dominant state. And that's where polycystic ovarian syndrome kind of originally was thought to originate. And we did a 12 days of PCOS, a whole issue on, on a whole uh, interview yeah. on that. And we're happy to, if anybody's interested in telling them how to get in touch with that. But it used to be high estrogen. Now when blood sugar and inflammation becomes so significant you can actually have low estrogen and no periods okay um does the estrogen have to be a specific amount to bleed i guess that's generally you have you need about a, a blood level of 80 in okay. order to take progesterone and withdraw the lining of the uterus so again the ovaries make estrogen and then estrogen goes flying through the blood lands on the uterus it fluffs the lining that says okay we're going to have a baby progesterone then follows that and you keep the pregnancy alive if you don't make a baby and the progesterone drops, the estrogen isn't needed anymore, everybody drops, the lining fluffs easily, sloughs evenly, and you have a period. Okay. And then the cycle starts again. So just giving that person progesterone, which seems to be the natural fix now, when there's no cycles or really horrible cycles, doesn't necessarily help, or maybe, I guess my asking, can it sometimes help to give that person a teenager progesterone? If their estrogen is elevated consistently, you want to slough that lining so they don't have that, oh my God, miserable period. But the problem we have is most people, the first thing they go to is my hormones are off, give me progesterone to fix it. And I see that in older women that come to us also. Right. So do I think progesterone's okay? Yes. If you've looked at everything else and you get everything else in line, it should come back on its own. If it doesn't or you've gone a couple months and you just don't want too much of a buildup lining, then using progesterone while you're fixing the other part of the cycle I think is totally reasonable. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. So when we're talking about, um, we talked about this a lot last week, you know, just being able to shed and detox that estrogen and we do see that that General detoxification in a lot of the people we see is an issue, and I think it's just because we are inundated with so many toxins that our body just really is not used to that. And I don't know if that's particular to Houston because we live in such a big city, there's so much traffic. We just also had Harvey, which really, I think, made our environment a lot worse. You know, we went through that whole video about having to spray mm -hmm. for mosquitoes, and we were just having to encounter a lot of things that we hadn't had to encounter before. So I think it's just kind of the perfect storm. Um, 
we're, you know, we only know what we see in Houston, but I know that worldwide we're seeing more issues with cycles and things like that. So just kind of going back to what does your teenager's diet look like, which is really hard because now they're away from the house. You know, when they're little, you control everything that goes in their mouth. When they're teenagers, they're away from you most of the time, or they want to be away from you most of the time. They have their own money a lot of times, especially if they can drive, and so you don't know what they're eating, but I would say that if they are having horrible cycles, it would be helpful for them to watch this video and to understand for themselves what's going on, to be more motivated to change things like diet, because it's gonna take their effort of knowing what they're putting into their mouth every day, what they're putting on their body, um, especially for them because they want to smell good, they want to look good, um, helping them understand that those products that they're using on their skincare, on their hair, can really contribute to adding estrogen burden. And basically kind of what happens is that you have hormone receptors and instead of your natural estrogen being able to get in there in a normal way, you've got these fake estrogens from these products that will look like and mimic estrogen and get into that slot instead and cause lots and lots of problems. Um, so it's helpful to understand that. We've talked about using natural skincare and hair care products, even sunscreen has a big impact. But overall, we are placing an emphasis on diet because that's what they're doing 24 seven. And we are actually hosting a cooking class and I will post um, the, how to sign up for that in the comments. But with that, we're gonna do a healthy food workout workshop aimed towards teenagers, girls and boys, but mostly girls will probably be interested in this. And we're gonna make healthy food, any, even food that can be made in the dorms um, that doesn't necessarily require cooking. And then we're gonna make some things that do require cooking and they're gonna take some stuff home with them on how to meal prep. So it's gonna be pretty fun. Um, and that would be a good thing for them to start with. But basically, if you go back and watch all our other videos, it's just going back to the veggie intake, good healthy cream, clean protein that helps you offload. Um, all those antioxidants and the vegetables and, and things that smell like sulfur like eggs um, doing Epsom salt baths. I mean, it's just kind of going back to the things we've done over and over again, right. getting the gut in shape to be able to offload the excess hormones. Am I missing anything? No, here? I think again, it's, it's kind of like when people talk about money, if you're poor, you either don't make enough or you spend too much. And I think that's where it comes to estrogen. It's finding that balance. So your body will automatically try to do it right and other stuff doesn't get in the way. So estrogen, again, is offloaded through the liver. You get the ability to offload estrogen to create that reaction from your vegetables. Your green vegetables give you that ability. So if everybody, we see that a lot. If somebody says, I eat well, great. Have your, you and your family write down two or three meals, right? Everybody that comes to see us, we say, give us your diet. Write that down and look at the amount of vegetables that are in your diet. And most of the time we find that replacing a lot of the simple carbohydrates with a little bit of a better fat and some of the green vegetables and a lot of times periods will come back to normal. So. And sleep. I know these kids I, at the high school, because I live in Katy, which is you know a great school district, but a lot of these kids at night have like six hours of homework, which is totally